This is the founder, Project Veritas. We're going to go through a list of all the shady shit he's been involved in after we listen to this shit, because make no, make no mistake about it, he is a fraud. And then after we go through the list of all the bullshit he's been involved in, I'm going to play you the absolute most cringe video you have ever seen in your life. It is a song and dance number by James O'Keefe. Our next guest is here to take us inside his brand new book, American Muckraker, Rethinking Journalism for the 21st Century by Project Veritas founder James O'Keefe. It's journalism. a journal on undercover citizen journalism, covering themes of power, privacy, and means and ends, and taking history of how the modern corporate media apparatus came to be. James O'Keefe, thanks for joining I us. I have a big problem. I have no problem with anybody interviewing, debating, assholes i i live for it my problem is is like advertising his book like that and, and legitimizing him as if he actually does have something to say about journalism good morning everyone so before uh we get into your book wanted to ask you about uh your lawsuit uh, against the new york times uh you've had some success with that can you tell us what's going on well, Which is insane. The New York Times for defamation in March of 2021 after they called our videos in Minnesota deceptive. The New York Times was forced to answer our defamation complaint, which is very rare because you have to get past motion to dismiss. You have to prove actual malice because I'm a public figure. The New York Times admitted in court documents in their answer that they got the facts wrong in that article from September 2020. They said it was not illegal what Liban Muhammad was doing with his ballots. But in the court documents, they said it was illegal to harvest more than three ballots. And the New York Times has yet to correct the article. So we get attacked for being. Oh, I don't think that's true. I, we've, we've, we that incident is. It, you got it wrong and still in this. And that, that dude is upset. Journalism ethics and in clown world when they project. As, as I was doing the research on like the pushback against O'Keefe. I had an interview with the guy he is referencing just then. And I'm like, well, it's, it's going to take up too much time to play all of this. Because let me tell you, this is a fucking long-ass list of bullshit James O'Keefe has done. On to us, what they do. And then, of course, after the FBI raid, the New York Times publishes my attorney-client privileged memos and tries to compare uh, it to the Pentagon. The FBI raid on him. Here, but there's more. And on Project Veritas. And so on the question of uh, journalism ethics, and I, and I think Project Veritas and everybody else is fully within their rights to file defamation claims against the media. There's no defamation right in the First Amendment. You defame somebody, then you, have to, you, you really have to defend the claims that you have made. But where, where I've been critical of Project Veritas on this particular lawsuit is the prior restraint that you sought against the New York Times. And so to give people background, you're, you're in this lawsuit. Uh, it, it appears that... You know, so you, you guys had to turn over documents as a part of discovery. Some of those documents then wound up in the New York Times. The most logical conclusion would be that the lawyers leaked those documents to their reporters, uh, which should be condemned if that's what happened, because you have to respect the sanctity of attorney-client privilege and these lawsuits. That, all of that aside, seeking prior restraint, telling a journalistic outfit that it can't publish something, to me, is crossing a line that is dangerous because prior restraint... Thank you, Ryan! You have this information, but you can't publish it. To me, really runs up against the First Amendment and really, ultimately, will be used against organizations in the future like yourself. Are you concerned about the precedent that that would set? Well, I'm, I, well first of all, it's not prior restraint. It's litigation misconduct. This is a case of, a case of first impression, okay? where we're suing the New York Times for defamation. We get past motion to dismiss. A judge in New York says the New York Times engaged in deception and disinformation by, uh, by putting an opinion in the first sentence of an of a article, and then Facebook, Robbie, banned our video because of what the New York Times said. So uh, when you publish the other side's attorney-client privilege documents, this is Ben Barr, the attorney of record in the defamation lawsuit, uh, the, the, in American jurisprudence, the attorney-client relationship is sacrosanct. The first amendment has its limits. It's not absolute. It's not absolute. And the press has a special obligation to, to um, uh, oversee itself. When, in a country when 
they, they're more powerful than all three branches of the government. And you're right. Uh, you're right. Defamation is not a First Amendment right. You can't intentionally lie about someone with actual malice. And by the way, where is the indignation from Dean Baquet at the New York Times for the government raiding my home? I mean, I don't know, Robbie, you're a libertarian. Where is the outrage? Yeah. I think a source send me, uh, sends me the a The outrage document? is over here. Yeah, we're outraged. Yeah, it's... I mean, but, yeah, but, 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 that, but where absolutely. is the... But where, but where is the... I, I don't know. I don't... Yeah. About they... They have been involved in some shady shit, and we know that James O'Keefe has committed federal crimes in the past. So the FBI raiding him isn't that big of a deal to me. Feds raiding my home and taking my stuff and throwing me against the wall in handcuffs. Within minutes of me being out of handcuffs, guess who texted me? The New York Times. Mike Schmidt, national security reporter. And that's what this book is about. It's about the fact that yeah. we live in a world where there's a symbiotic relationship between government, pharmaceutical companies, and the paper of record. And it's not how journalism ought to be. I don't consider you're complaining about capitalism. We could talk a lot about this. It's it's very nuanced. It's not it's not necessarily prior restraint. A, litig a litigant can't publish the other side's l lawyer documents. And if someone sent me. The New York Times, Kurtzberg's documents, and I wouldn't... Apparently, Rhode Island is real. I'm sorry. Biden's diary. People say you're a right-wing extremist. Well, if I was a right-wing... Uh, Somebody actually, published your diary. Actually, Biden's personal diary, but two things. Number one, I couldn't verify with 100% certainty it was hers. And number two, I didn't think public eyes should see the private musings of this of this person. I didn't. I couldn't confirm if the things she wrote in the diary actually occurred. So it's a little more nuanced... Um, Ryan, then they make it out to be. And there's a lot to unpack here, which is why I wrote a whole book about journalism yeah. ethics. Well, and, and you know, you, you, the, the journalism, uh, the mainstream media has really embarrassed itself so badly in the last, I don't even know how many years, forever now, uh, you know, contributing to a loss of trust. And I, I think it's been a good thing and valuable to have alternative media because it's been corporatist can shine a light on help the defense contractors uh, lie us into war in Iraq developed, Afghanistan a, you know, right now we're, we have a, a, a democratic administration in power you're complaining about there's capitalism some Robbie there some sympathy from some corners of the media and yes there's uh, uh, the COVID stuff on other things there's been this kind of tremendous um, clamping down or, 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 or a desire to kind of peddle the pre preferred narratives in the media uh, from the from the White House and on, on tech platforms. I'm not high enough for this shit. As God you know. damn. So, you know, what is your, so you're, you're, you've done this, uh, an all, you, you know, you've paved your own way. You know, how, how is your, what is your thinking about journalism norms and, and, you know, your role in crafting an alternative institution and, and you know, the responsibilities that, that you have to, to, to shine a light on these stories? Well, Robbie, there's always been a traditional uh, dichotomy or tension between a journalist's access and a journalist's autonomy. In other words, if you're too adversarial, uh, it engenders biases of their own partisan factions that James Madison talked about. But if you're too close and cozy with your sources in government and pharmaceutical companies, that engenders an even worse bias. Uh, it becomes, as Noam Chomsky described, a symbiotic relationship. You, you take information from sources that are presumed credible, right? And that's what's happening. That's what happened at the New York Times. I mean, Ben Smith, I mean, I, got, I give Ben Smith, media columnist, a lot of credit. I think he's a hero because he came out on Twitter and said journalists should not be cheerleading these Fed raids against journalists. And there's a, a, evidently a schism within the paper of record, the New York Times. As someone who's had a foot in the journalism world, the term muckraker is not a positive term. It refers to people that did yellow journalism. As in slandering people. <laughs> so American Muckraker is actually a pretty apt title for James O'Keefe's book. On Twitter that that, that that raid was dangerous, that an FBI raid related to Ashley Biden's diary, which if a source provides a journalist with material and the FBI then raids uh, to, in order to obtain evidence about how, where, how and where that came from, that's a... But did somebody affiliated with Veritas I, I also wanted to commit a crime? I'm sure the FBI had some sort of evidence. 
So let's talk about the the 2018 case of uh, the the sting. Well, well, well. Maybe I'm giving the FBI too much credit. Fuck. I'm even. I'm even wearing my shirt that says "Government protecting and serving the shit out of you." Here I am, like, well, I'm sure the FBI had evidence. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Cops lie. FBI are cops as well. I'm sorry. I want to be consistent here. H.R. McMaster. You know, so as you know, as as everybody knows, uh, Corey Lewandowski, Steve Bannon, and others. There's a big factional fight going on in the White House. You had H.R. McMaster on one side, and then you had the kind of anti-H.R. McMaster faction, the Bannon Lewandowski's on the other side. The New York Times had reported uh, that your uh, your uh, your journalists were trained by Eric Prince uh, in different espionage tactics, and then you orchestrated a scheme where you were going to send a woman in with a video camera to say inappropriate things around H.R. McMaster, and then that would be used against H.R. McMaster. That's what the New York Times reported. That would have been in the interest of that, of that faction inside the White House. Can you respond to that, that reporting? I think at the time you said it was a giant smear story, but can you respond in some more detail about that, about that entire operation? Ryan, go back to the article because the New York Times did Sounds not like his MO. behind the McMaster's thing. The New York Times ultimately said in paragraph like 19 or something, it's unclear whether James O'Keefe was involved. And that's the problem. We didn't, we were Oh, oh, RB, RB, just wait. Just wait until I show you this video. It is the most cringe video you will ever see in your life. I promise you, you have not seen anything like it. You think, you think... O'Keefe has a punchable face now. Just wait, especially if you're a Prince fan. We weren't involved in that. I wasn't behind that. I, I came out and condemned. I didn't say I was nothing to do with that. So it's just false. It's all innuendo. It's all supposition, circumstantial. It's all rumor and innuendo. This motherfucker listens to Bruce Pritchard's podcast. As would my team, that we had nothing to do with the with any such idea. And that is the problem with journalism. Again, they always bury the lead. It's unclear whether to be clear. Oh, they use a clickbait headline? Paragraphs below. And why the heck is the national security reporters for the New York Times obsessed with me? They have like a James O'Keefe voodoo doll there at the New York Times. They stick pins in them. They should be sticking pins in the government. Get off your cross. Robbie and Ryan is in Washington, D.C. in the summer. We had reporters in bars and restaurants, like reporters tend to do, overhearing and discussing conversations with Stuart Croft at the State Department, uh, a woman named Allison Raybar at DOJ. And these people bragged openly in public places about how they didn't work and they were scanning license plates of dissidents and they were trying to F things up, to quote Stuart Croft. These were mid to low level people at these organizations. We're doing our jobs. That's what the fourth estate is supposed to do. You know, expose waste, fraud, and abuse. And for p- newspapers to attack us for that, I have to wonder whose side they're on. Are they on the side of transparency? You, you mentioned uh, sources receiving documents. The US Supreme Court, uh, John Paul Stevens authored the majority opinion in Bar- Nikki V. Vopper from 2001. Journalists have a right to publish documents Uh, even if those documents were stolen so long as the journalist did not participate in the theft of those documents. This Mm -hmm. is common sense. It's self-evident. I don't know why. I don't, I, I, here's a rhetorical question, which I don't. So he's, he's learned his lesson that he has plausible deniability away from the people that are, are being tasked with stealing these documents. Evidence, not hearsay. Not well, anonymous sources, but actual evidence. Last yeah, we'll, question, and we have to run. But all right, maybe my, Robbie has one more. But can, can you can you flesh out a little bit of what that Eric Prince training was? Because it goes to the question of it, what kind of institution, what kind of undercover work. So what right. is what is Eric? For those of you who don't know, Eric Prince was the uh, uh, founder of Blackwater and the CEO, a, like a, a mercenary company that did all kinds of fucking shady shit for the U.S. government. Well, he's Betsy DeVos's fucking brother or some shit, or brother-in-law. Fuck all the way off. Eric Prince is a piece of shit. There's been several documentaries about how big of a piece of shit he is. Prince conveying to Project, Oper- uh, Project Veritas 
operatives. Well, I t so I, I talk about that in this book, American Muckraker, in a chapter called Secrets. I, I learned that espionage and investigative reporting do overlap. It's like a Venn diagram, but we're not spies oh. because spies, uh, spies may operate for state interest. The investigative reporter operates in the public interest. And Aristotle oh. said, you are what you do. So people can cast names and labels or you're a spy. Well, no, because we operate in the public interest. And yes, yeah. we do use undercover techniques, but here, and this is all written about, including your question in this chapter called Secrets, we believe it's a question of relative deception. If you identify yourself as a reporter to these fraudsters, hello, I'm Ryan Grimm from The Intercept. Tell me all the fraud you're going to be committing. <laughs> They're never going to tell you that, so you do have to use some element of pretense in order to tell the truth to the audience, and that's what the First Amendment is about. So we only keep three secrets at Project Veritas. The names of our whistleblowers, the names of our donors, and, and ongoing investigations. Every names of their donors. Transparent, uh, and that's what we do. We've got to, got to leave it there. Uh, great discussion. Names of our donors, but we're completely uh, transparent. Light on, on uh, what you're That's doing. a red flag. Like a fascinating book. I actually, actually got a... Especially since uh, they've had a much higher profile in the last, what, five years? I can't believe I'm actually having to deal with the validity of Project Veritas as a source, given all the shit they've been involved in. They've had their Twitter account permanently suspended back in February of 2021 for repeated violations of Twitter's private information policy, misleading accusations of illegal ballot harvesting by Ilan Omar's campaign, Comes from September 2020, Project Veritas released two videos accusing Rep. Ilan Omar of committing voter fraud through ballot harvesting and using a cash for ballot scheme. The first showed Libin uh, Osman, the brother of Minneapolis City Councilman Jamal Osman, this is the, the video I was referencing, talking on Snapchat about the importance of money in political campaigns and showing his dashboard full of absentee ballot envelopes. The second video shows two men speaking in Somali about filling out a voter registration form. The second video claims $200 changed hands, but only closed envelopes appear on screen. Both videos contain interviews with Minneapolis Somali uh, community members who accuse Ilan Omar's campaign of various forms of corruption and voter fraud. The video's release timing led some to believe it was a coordinated information campaign with other conservatives, including Donald Trump Jr. In early October, Libin Osman claimed Omar Jamal offered him $10,000 through Project Veritas if he said he was harvesting ballots for Rep. Omar's campaign. Many sources noted Project Veritas' history of using misleading reports to serve a political agenda. Nopes reported our research didn't uncover any credible evidence backing up the claim that Omar is guilty of participating in or being the architect of illegal ballot, ballot harvesting or election fraud. Oh, Left-wing Wisconsin groups infiltrated by men tied to Project Veritas in September of 2020. Six left-wing Wisconsin groups, black leaders organizing for communities, our Wisconsin revolution, souls to the polls, uh... Looks, I'm not even going to try the, it looks like a Spanish group. Wisconsin Race Class Narrative Project and Wisconsin Voices. Composed a joint letter asking Wisconsin Attorney General Josh Call to investigate Project Veritas. Diamond Dog operation to suppress mail-in and absentee voting. To lead up to the 2020, see they were awfully active in the 2020 election. O'Keefe's new Diamond Dog operation is focused on discrediting and suppressing mail-in and absentee voting with the ultimate goal of re-electing Donald Trump, according to reporting by the New Republic. The article states the operation's scope spans the United States with particular focus on voter registration efforts in California and Texas. Being operations are meant to expose widespread mail-in ballot corruption and fraud. PNR reports that the that in Texas, Project Veritas operatives, including Facebook staffer Cassandra Spencer, worked closely with GOP operative Andy Harris, chief of staff to Rep. Lance Gooden. Harris's direct action Texas group has connected Project Veritas with staffers in Texas Attorney General uh, Ken Paxton's office. You know about Paxton being indicted fucking five years ago and still not being prosecuted. 
Diamond Dog Operation has also been a valuable fundraising source for Project Veritas. E&R reports that internal documents show its fundraising total increased by $4.58 million from 2018 to 2019 to a total of $13.44 million. After Project Veritas attempted to infiltrate Democracy Partners, a group called the Undercut and American Family Voices launched Project Veritas Exposed. The mission of the site is to serve as a research resource, a resource for individual and organizations' targets uh, of Project Veritas. The site keeps a running list of attempted stings Project Veritas is caught in and a failed Washington Post sting. Apparently, something having to do with Roy Moore, the pedophile Senate candidate in Alabama. Project Veritas was served with a restraining order, and their latest sting was blocked. I don't know about latest. This looks like it was an illegal sting over the summer of 2017. O'Keefe, who pled guilty in federal cases, threatened the Wisconsin... Attorney General Schimmel into a flip-flop on Project Veritas video. October 2016, James O'Keefe, a widely discredited video attack dog, published video through his group Project Veritas showing Democratic political operatives in bars discussing the use uh, of inappropriate and potentially illegal campaign tactics with unidentified persons posing as funders. The video does not contain any evidence that any of the campaign activities discussed were actually undertaken. 2017, O'Keefe was sued for breaking federal and local wiretap laws in the incident. I'm going to check this out. Just look up Project Veritas in SourceWatch. I mean, it goes on and fucking on. Disingenuous acorn sting. The, uh... Were they involved with the Planned Parenthood body parts bullshit? But of all the shitty stuff he's done, this has got to be the worst. Oh, never he's clearly a theater kid that couldn't make it in Hollywood. Like so many. Of these right wing nut jobs. Like they wanted to be in Hollywood and they couldn't make it. So this. This ladies and gentlemen is. The most cringe video you will ever see. Starring James O'Keefe. It says it, those things out loud but it's obvious. Here's some leads, leads. It leads, it leads. I think that's probably it. Permanently suspended his account after he exposed hypocrisy and fraud at CNN. Project Veritas, a very controversial that conservative group. promoting misinformation. The Times reported that the footage from Project Veritas was part of According a, to Stanford researchers, a coordinated disinformation Coordinated campaign. disinformation. The New York Times for defamation. Project Veritas just won a major victory in that case. Come to you and offer you $100 million, million and you're not going to settle. settle? I would tell them to go to hell. <laughs> I, 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 I just can't believe now is he saying he's part of the oligarchy is suing twitter for defamation taken down because they confronted a facebook executive if a video like that down that would be due to a doxing concern I can show you a video of CNN doing the exact same thing. Twitter made factual statements about our client that are false. I told you. I told you. Now this is a Prince song. It's called Controversy. Prince, an amazing artist. Maybe, maybe the greatest musician ever to walk the face of the earth. James O'Keefe, who I think is a despicable person. 
judge says, and your reporters and your reporters interject their opinions, 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 their opinions,